This is 2320 Computing 2, and this is the first unit in the debugging series. Um, and in this unit, we're going to uh, introduce you to bugs and uh, debugging. Okay, so part one, um, we'll just give you a brief introduction um, to um, why we get bugs and what will be what we mean by bugs in programming. Um, and we'll start off with a very brief history of bugs. So the term bug has been used to describe a fault or a flaw um, for um, actually quite a long time. So uh, Thomas Edison discovered who was the inventor of the light bulb. Um, is recorded as referred to uh, bugs as being uh, faults and difficulties, and that was back in 1878. And during the Second World War, bugs and glitches were a term used by um, engineers to describe problems with military hardware. Of course, this is not normally taken literally, but there is one very famous example of um, back from the very early days of computers. So. Um, in 1947, in the Harvard Mark II computer, uh, in the days when only a very few universities had one computer each, um, they recorded that the computer had stopped working because of literally a bug had got into it. But why do we get bugs in our software? Um, so despite what generations of, of programmers have tried to claim, bugs are not random. Um, and in most cases, it's down to human errors in software um, rather than random spontaneous failures of hardware. I mean, it is theoretically possible for a cosmic ray to go and um, interact with a bit of memory and cause a problem. But in reality, bugs happen because humans are fallible and computers are incredibly fast, but also incredibly stupid. Um, so. Being able to remove bugs from code, so debugging, is probably the most important skill you're going to develop as a programmer. You need to be able to identify and correct where you've got bugs in your own code. And if you're ever going to work with anybody else's code, you're going to end up probably having to do the same with somebody else's code. So in this unit of the video tutorials, we'll talk a bit about um, uh, how you can try and find out where bugs are and to look at them um and to correcting them um second unit i'll run through some of the very common uh, exceptions that you're going to see when programming in python and try and give you a general idea of what might be causing those and therefore where you might want to be looking in your code to see what's happened the other side of course is to try and avoid writing code which has too many bugs in it in the first place um, and in the third unit, I'll talk about some strategies uh, you can ad adopt for trying to reduce the number of bugs you introduce into your own code. Um, and actually, the fourth unit will go and talk a little bit about um, some of the tools that you get with uh, modern programming environments that will help you locate and, and remove bugs. So very broadly, we can think of dividing bugs into basically three types of categories. So the first one are syntax errors. So these are basically failures to follow the rules of the language. So these happen when you've got mistyped statements or missing punctuation, unmatched brackets, unfinished quotes, um, and in Python particularly, uh, wrong number of spaces at the start of a line. And then there's another class of errors you can get, which we can loosely call identifier errors. So these are caused by trying to refer to a variable or function that doesn't exist, um, isn't defined at the time you're trying to refer it to it. And again, this is generally caused by mistyping of variables and function names, or sometimes you can get um, problems with failing to import a function before you're trying to use it. Uh, and I'll show you some other examples of where you can get these sorts of problems. And then the final class of errors are what you might call a logic error. So these are in fact the hardest bugs to try and correct because there's nothing actually wrong with your code. The computer can run your code, it'll do exactly what you told it to go and do. The problem is you've told it to do the wrong thing. Um, and these are essentially caused by programmers making assumptions um, that are not warranted or, or simply getting the operations in the wrong order um, or uh, 
typically with a, a complicated program, it'll be some combination of these things going on. 